So today we're gonna to cover cameras. We're gonna do it quick and dirty. In fact, we're gonna try to cover all my camera gear that I use to self film my hunts in 10 minutes or less, preferably less. And we're gonna start off with probably the most common camera that you're gonna need that people use to self film their hunts. And I have a love hate relationship with them is their action cameras. So we're looking at GoPros, but DJI makes one, Insta360. Uh, Tacticam, there's all kinds of action cameras. They're small, they're convenient, they're durable, you can beat and pound on them, waterproof, submerge them, do all kinds of stuff with them. They're a necessary evil. If you're gonna self-film your hunt, you don't have a cameraman, you can't be lugging a big DSLR like the one I got in front of me right here, or the one over here. You're gonna have to use an action camera. Love-hate relationship with GoPros. If you wanna self-film and get the, I guess, the shot on film, you gotta do something. Like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with them because they are super convenient, but they've got such tiny sensors in them that when you start getting into low light, um, then you throw in audio, the audio is not that great in them. One thing I do love about the GoPros though is their image stabilization is fantastic. So right now, what am I using? So I've got the latest and greatest GoPro 13. I got a GoPro 12. Actually, this is the 10. And a GoPro 12 that I use for my over-the-shoulder mount. Uh, I need at least two for myself because I'm gonna keep one in my pocket to do some self-filming stuff. I keep one on my over-the-shoulder mount. Just a couple pointers on these GoPros. I usually keep them on wide. I don't do super view or anything like that. Wide's good enough for me. I feel like the image stabilization is the greatest on that with less cropping and so on and so forth. All my cameras, I like to have full control of from light balance to shutter speed to frame rates to ISO. I want full control of my cameras. Uh, so how do I set up my GoPros? They're not great in poor light. So I set an ISO max of 400. I also set my white balance to what I want. If I'm outside, it's usually gonna be around 5,000K, uh, 5,200K. But I customize my white balance. If you ever do some editing in post and you wanna color grade, you have something that's like set in auto white balance, you're kind of chasing your tail the whole time you're editing. I usually shoot in 30 frames per second, unless I'm gonna do slow-mo, and then I'll bump it up to 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. Don't really mess with the shutter speed on the GoPros because it's gonna, it affects that image stabilization when I play around with the shutter speed too much. So as far as cameras are concerned, I love shooting hybrid cameras, so like DSLRs and the new mirrorless cameras. I feel they give me the greatest versatility to do the most out in the field. My two main cameras are, the one in front of me is a Canon R5, and the one right here is a Canon 90D. So the primary lens that I use on the Canon R5, that is a L-series lens, and it's the uh, 15 to 35. I like shooting at low left stops. Uh, you get that nice bokeh in the background, you get that separation from your subject in the background. Um, I think that's, that's a more quality looking image. The primary lens I use on the 90D is a 16 to 35 L-series lens, and that one, the focusing motors in that one are quite a bit louder, so if I have a shotgun mic, on that camera, I can hear that autofocus going like did -did 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 super annoying. Another lens that I really like a lot that I've added to my arsenal is the 50 millimeter prime lens. This is another L series lens by Canon. Uh, this goes down to an f stop of 1.2. It takes wicked good, wicked good photos, super sharp. Lenses, sky's the limit. You can go and go and go. I think that's your best investment versus a camera. Um, if I were gonna upgrade anything, first thing I would do is look at lenses. Audio, I want good audio. I use a Rode NTG shotgun mic on my Canon R5. I use a wireless Go 2 on the Canon 90D. These wireless Go 2s, they also record within the unit. Sometimes I'll keep one of these on me and I have it set to record always. Hook up a lav mic and I can record audio right on this and dump it right into my computer and sync it up in post. If I want good audio on say, if I use a GoPro or I use a phone for some reason and boom, I have good audio right away. Sometimes I've got three options for audio. So on the camera in front of me, I've got a shotgun mic on there. On the Canon 90D, I got the wireless Go 2 recording audio on there through my lav mic. And then on the wireless Go 2, I have it recording on this. So at any point, something fails or something doesn't work, this video is not wasted. I can get audio someplace. You don't want to waste your time. Your time's worth something. And so just having some redundancies set in place will make your life a whole lot simpler. I 
Other things you want to keep in mind, you get a bigger camera, need more storage. I like solid state hard drives. This is the SanDisk Extreme Pro that I kind of use as my, I work off of this one. Bigger cameras like the Canon R5 that you're going to be shooting huge files, say 8K or 4K, 120 frames per second. Um, you're going to need what's called a CF Express card. This is a 512 gigabyte card. It's a necessity if you're going to shoot high frame rates at high quality. And the other thing I like about the Canon R5 is it has two card slots. So I've got a slot for a standard SD card and then the CF Express card. And I will do things like dual record my photos. So if I take a photo, I will have a raw version of that photo stored on the CF Express card and then a JPEG version of that same photo put on the uh, SD card. And that's great for just having some redundancy in my production. So if something fails, I have a backup. The Canon 90D, the lens I have on that camera, does not have any image stabilization. The Canon R5 has in-body stabilization. They call it IBIS. So with that camera, if I'm gonna use it by hand, I'll use what's called a stabilizer. And basically this is just like a gimbal. I don't like motorized gimbals, but I've used the Flycam Red King for quite a while. So this basically takes all of my movement out of the camera and makes the picture super rock steady. And it's also convenient, you can spin this around to go back towards you, spin it around and go back away from you. You can do a lot of things with these, um, but they are a bit cumbersome. And since buying the Canon R5, I really don't use this much anymore. So since we're on the topic of this, so all my cameras have the plates on the bottom that fit a Manfrotto base. I can go from the, the uh, fly cam to this, to any tripod that I want in just a snap. My over the shoulder mount. It's a must if you're gonna sell film. So I like the guys that, you know, they always had the over the shoulder mounts that came from their backpacks, but I don't wear a backpack. What am I gonna do? So what I ended up buying is, I think I got this off of Amazon, and it's basically just a mounting bracket brace um, that has a ball mount here. This thing is super versatile. You can put this on your shoulder here and mount the GoPro off of that there. So I like this. It goes onto my back, just like so. Straps around my chest. This, that goes under my vest. I don't even know it's there. I can adjust it however I want. It's handy enough that I can turn the GoPro on, right like that. Out of my periphery, I can see the red light blinking if it's recording. If it's not, I can just reach up, hit record real quick. So this has worked out well for me. So this mount, I'll link in the description below, doesn't come with this carbon fiber boom. And this is a GoPro carbon fiber boom, which I use for a lot of things. But yeah, I think it's what, an 18 inch section, foot, one foot section. And it was just big enough to come off from my side, up over my shoulder. And I really like how that's, that's mounted there. You know, if I'm going through the brush, this is right here. I will just reach up and grab this and duck through the brush. And the camera doesn't get ripped off, doesn't get hung up and stuff. Uh, it's, it worked out really well for me last year. I also have a little bit of a pet peeve with, with taking video footage and seeing another camera in the frame. So you'll see that where this is positioned in my videos and when I'm talking here, my head blocks it. Um, I just don't like having a camera in a scene anywhere. I think it takes away from the experience for the viewer. They want to view the hunt. They want to feel like they're there in the hunt with the person. And when you see cameras all around, I don't know, just for me, that takes something away from the whole film. That's most of my video gear in a nutshell. Before we go, I want to leave you with these five fundamental points that I feel are important to making self-filming your hunts enjoyable. Number one, invest in yourself. Before you go buy expensive equipment and fancy lenses and fancy cameras and whatnot, invest in yourself. And what do I mean? Take a course, take some time to learn, whether it's through hard knocks or paying for a course or whatever it is, just invest in yourself. You'll be surprised what you can do with very little equipment at all if you know how to use the equipment that you got. Two, be intentional. Have a plan on what you want to shoot and how you want to shoot it. I like to plan what shots I want to have throughout the course of a day when I'm going out deer hunting. And then I'm not worried about like randomly trying to get shots here and there. I kind of have segmented blocks throughout the day that I know that I want to get. And it kind of takes the pressure off all the other times. I can just leave the camera in the pack, put away, and I can focus on hunting or focus on nature. Number three, do things for you. You gotta make it fun for you. You can't be out there, if you post stuff, 
for others to see. You just can't be doing stuff to try to get clicks and whatnot. You gotta do things for you. It has to be enjoyable for you. If it's not enjoyable for you, it's not sustainable and you're not gonna do it. If you do decide to post, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff, do it with just the open-mindedness that, hey, this is who I am. This is what I wanna present. This is kind of my art form. If you like it, good. If you don't like it, hit the bricks. My value does not come from likes or dislikes. Just post it, move on. And number five, lastly, just be yourself, be you. There's only one you. Don't try to be like somebody else. Um, you're gonna put yourself in a creative box. For instance, you get a newbie shooting video and they don't know the technically right way to do everything, right? So they do something and at first everyone's kind of like, that's not how you're supposed to do it. And that's not how you're supposed to do it. That doesn't look right. But guess what? They hit on a trend or maybe they're a trendsetter and they didn't even know it um, because they quote unquote did something incorrect. It ended up being a new look that a lot of people liked and they set a new trend and you never know what that new trend is gonna be. So be you. But anyway, that's what I use to self film my hunts. It looks like a lot. I've got it pretty well streamlined that it's convenient for me and I kind of have it down to a system. So let me leave you with this. If you've ever thought about self-filming, or maybe you haven't thought about self-filming, you should think about it. Because even if you don't do it for the social media aspect, to post it, do stuff like that, it's a documentation of your life that your family will see years after you're gone. What a great thing to sit down. Like I would love to be able to hear my grandfather's voice or my great-grandfather's voice out deer hunting or fishing and doing that stuff. That would be great to sit down and watch. I, I just think that would be invaluable for anybody's family. I don't care who you are or what the quality is. I don't see how it wouldn't be valuable to your family members. So at the end of the day, you just gotta grab a camera and do it. There. Somehow I'm gonna get this in 10 minutes and less. I promise. I was long-winded, holy frig. <laughs>